Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the most, this 8 second gaming, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at how to win more fights off drop. I see a lot of people talking about how they can't make it past early game, they can't win their drop spot, and they can't rank up because of that. So we're going to be taking a look at this example, showing you guys how to win more fights off drop, and so you can start to climb a lot easier. But just quickly, before we do that, if you guys are here and you're actually serious about getting better at Apex, then you need to check out the Game Leap website right now. Over there, we have top level coaches, including myself, creating the best, most highly informative guides to make you the best player you can possibly be. We have legend guides, gun guides, VOD reviews, like this one that you're going to watch right here, all on the site already. There's hundreds of videos, so click the link in the description, treat yourself to a membership, and start to improve today. But okay, jumping into the video now, let's talk about winning fights off drop. So the one rule you guys always need to be drilling into your head when you want to start winning fights off drop is that high ground is king, especially in like early game fights. The more high ground you can have, the better. And in spots like Thermal Station, where there is this really cool spot up here that you can play and you can land on when you're going off drop, you definitely want to look for spots like this so that you can take them and really control the flow of fights. Because if somebody was to be, say, out here, I would have a, just a free line of sight to rain down on them, and they can't really get back to their team without taking a massive detour. They're gonna have to go around the edge here, they're gonna have to break a lot of line of sight, and they're not going to have direct paths. So you're breaking this fight into basically a 2v2 against its enemy team where you're hoping that your teammates can get a little bit more damage out or you can even break off and go fight with them and the person that's over here might not even know that you're doing that because the threat of you shooting them is so high that they have to break line of sight and they won't know what you're doing anymore. Like if they're behind this box right here, if they jump down onto here, they can't see you. They're going to be taking a lot more time because they're going to be more cautious and you're going to be able to to just absolutely dominate their team if they're also out of position. So always be remembering when you're dropping, high ground is very key and you need to be taking it if you can. So all right now, I'm just looking around here to try and make sure that this enemy team isn't making moves over here. We did have the Bloodhound scan. I know that there isn't anybody here right now, but I don't want them to be rotating in easily. If they're coming from over here and they wanna take this bin, they're gonna have to deal with my spikes first. And my spikes are now on cooldown, so I'm starting to regain them a little bit faster. If you can start to take real estate away from enemy teams, you definitely should. Like if you were playing somebody like a caustic as well, you can start to throw gas barrels down like right here or right here. And that starts to take away real estate and the enemy team is going to have less and less to play. And they're also going to have less and less loot that your team is going to be able to access. So just take away real estate, take away loot, make the enemy team suffer as much as you possibly can. But once I have that, I'm starting to look around for the enemy team. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know what this Valkyrie did. She landed, she got blue armor and then and just gave up. I don't know if somebody took her loot. I don't know what happened. But in your games, if you see that, absolutely take advantage of it. I know that some people say, well, they're DC'd or they gave up. Like, it's not really that fair. No, it's not fair. I'm not saying it is fair, but it's a free kill. And if this wasn't ranked, that'd be RP for you. Take them when you can get them. But as soon as that Valkyrie's down, I'm starting to look around and figure out where the other teammates are. And I do want to drop off height here because I can hear my teammates kind of moving in closer around these people. And because I did a, like basically a full sweep, of this area, I know that there's only one spot that they can be now, and it's going to be in this kind of area right here because my lifeline's right here. She's obviously not being hit because she still has full armor, full health, so they have to be either inside or on this side right here. So I don't need to be on height anymore because I can't shoot down onto them, and I'm leaving my teammates in a 2v2 when we have the advantage. Right now, I want to press this advantage, and I want to be a lot more aggressive than I would normally be when we didn't know where they were, or we didn't know how many people were up, or there was still three people up. So as soon as I'm hopping down here, I'm also throwing out more spikes to take away more real estate. You always, always want to be taking space away when you can. I know that some people aren't going to always be playing a Catalyst or a Watson or a Caustic, so they're not going to be able to do this, but it's just saying when you can do it. And taking away real estate doesn't always have to be with a defensive legend like that. If you can take away spots to play by placing yourself somewhere, like for example, if this person wasn't here and I don't want them to swing this area, you can move to this box over here and you can hold that spot. So it takes takes away this entire area for them because they can't play that anymore because you're right there. If you play over here and your lifeline's playing over here, there's only a certain amount of spots that they can play over here where they're not going to be getting shot by either one of you or they're going to have to put themselves in a really tough position in order to get to you and they're going to take a lot of damage. Hopefully, hopefully you hit your shots. But with this, you're going to be seeing that there's a lot more options that you have when you start to take away real estate. I see way too many people back down way too often. Like they see the 
this person here and they think, oh my God, I'm going to get shot. So they try to walk over here and get out of line of sight. And it's just not something you guys need to be doing when you have an advantage or when you're trying to get an advantage. Never let the enemy team dictate the flow of the fight. Never let them control the fight when you don't have to. Sometimes you get hit a little bit hard. You get blindsided. It happens. Maybe they get a lucky shot and you have to back off. You have to heal. But that's something that you can't control in some situations. In other situations, you can be the one to set the pace and that's what you guys absolutely need to be doing if you want to win more fights off drop they're not in a spot where they can really do anything and i can push up on them for free because my lifeline's fighting i'm able to get some shots finish the fuse and then start to play this person inside and start to move in and be a lot more aggressive and my teammates are able to help be a little bit more decoys they did do some pretty good damage, but because the enemy team was focused on them, I'm able to just come around the corners, help my teammates, clean up some kills, and there, there's three kills right there. I have 360 damage, and I took no damage whatsoever. Did my teammates take a lot of damage? My lifeline didn't even get her shields cracked. My bloodhound almost went down, so there wasn't a ton of damage that went out. My bloodhound did almost die, but again, it's not a ton of damage. In total, they didn't really do a lot. So there's not a whole lot of options for third parties either because all my Bloodhound has to do is grab an armor swap, go to my lifeline, and he's able to heal up while still being fighting positions. So there is some stuff there. But this is just an example for you guys to win a lot more fights off drop with you can being more aggressive and being more dictating of fights and allow yourself to really climb in rank because I see way too many people, like I said, giving up positions, giving up momentum. Don't be that type of player anymore. Absolutely push stuff when you can and start to improve your fights off drop. Now, I do know that there are going to be some people that say, hey, you're using pub gameplay to talk about ranked gameplay that's played a little bit differently. And yes, ranked is played differently than pub games. I'm not going to argue against that fact. However, in this specific situation, I use these exact same techniques in very high level ranked gameplay. When I'm playing in diamond lobbies, master lobbies, predator lobbies, I use these exact same techniques because these are the basics. These are the fundamentals and they're a very good ground level for you to build on top of and really work your skills level so even though this is a pub game this is something that you guys definitely can learn from start to implement it into your games build a foundation off of it and really start to climb once you guys can get this down you're going to be making it into mid game and end game a lot more often with more kills because this is three easy kills right here easy rp but with that being said guys i really want to know a question from you now what is something that you guys struggle with in game that you would like to see me cover on this channel? I would either be doing a VOD review or more of a breakdown style gameplay stuff. Uh, just, you know, let me know in the comments down below and we can see if we can get a video up for you guys. But with all this being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did and you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest Apex Legends tips, tricks, and news, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm 8 Second Gaming and I will see you in the next one.